Today we are taking a look at our first 2023 Subaru Solterra. This is Subaru's first all electric power vehicle. I'm gonna talk about all the details, the trim levels that are being offered on this Subaru line, the price points, and some of the unique features that are only available on the Solterra. If you guys are new to my channel, my name is Alex. I like to share weekly videos all about Subaru related topics. So if you enjoy things like that, then click on the subscribe button down below. If you guys have any questions, leave those down in the comment section below. I'll do my best to answer those for you guys and address those in future videos. With this Solterra being a service loaner, it means it's gonna stay here at the dealership, which gives me the ability to make a series going over all the unique things that are involved with an electric car, talking about best practices with charging, how to connect your phone wirelessly and use your phone as a key for your Solterra, and also talk about how to get your hands on one of these. There's very limited production on these. We only got four for the year. Those should be arriving here at the end of the year. We're going to be getting more hopefully in 2024. That's the goal. And we'll have orders open for those as well. So you can reach out to me here at Bachman Subaru if you are interested in getting your hands on one or just trying to learn more about these vehicles. There are three trim level offerings for the Subaru Solterra, which is much less than any of our other model offerings. For example, if you go with an Outback or a Forester, there is more than double the trim level offerings. There is no base trim level for a Solterra. It starts out as the premium trim level, then it moves on up to the Limited and the Touring. The price of a premium is about $46,000, the Limited is around forty-nine dollars to $50,000, and then the Touring trim level is about $53,000. Of course, depending on the accessories you add on, that will fluctuate slightly, but that is going to be your MSRP with destination delivery on all three trim levels. This one right here is actually a Limited, so it's right in the middle, and the MSRP on it is right at $50,037, and that is because it includes the all-weather floor liners, which run about $176, and the all-weather cargo mat and the cargo area, which is $141. The Limited and the Touring trim level in the Solterra both have these 20-inch alloy wheels, and they have the 12.3-inch touchscreen display. This is only on the Limited and Touring. If you go at the premium trim level, unfortunately, you do get the much smaller screen. It's an 8-inch display instead. Something to note on electric vehicle tires is that these are specific to an electric vehicle. Usually you can tell by some sort of design on the sidewall of the tire itself. And the reason you have special tires for an EV is because these vehicles are incredibly heavy. Aside from that, range is a big deal for electric vehicles, trying to conserve range, getting the most out of a single charge and having minimal resistance is important. So having tires that are rated for minimal resistance can hold the weight and of course withstand the instant high torque that you see naturally in an electric car. Speaking of range, the Solterra gets approximately 228 miles on a single charge. This is an all-wheel drive system. All of the Solterras are all-wheel drive no matter what trim level you go with. When you compare this to the Toyota BZ4X, which is co-produced with Subaru, you can get a front wheel drive system on the Toyota, which would give you approximately 250 miles of range or 228 if you opted for the upgrade on the Toyota side to the all wheel drive system that comes standard in the Subaru Solterra. It wouldn't be a Subaru if it didn't have excellent ground clearance. For an EV, it's incredibly difficult to get high ground clearance because of the large battery that's underneath the vehicle, but this has 8.3 inches of ground clearance. Compare that to our Outbacks, our Foresters, our Sense, those all have 8.7 inches of ground clearance, so not far off from that. And then if you also compare this to the Toyota BZ4X, the same or similar vehicle, that one has 8.1 inches, so really not far from the Subaru. So if you do have intentions of taking this off the beaten path, maybe you're going hiking, or you live somewhere where you're commonly on gravel or dirt roads, where there's rocks, sticks, and debris in the way, you'll have more peace of mind knowing that you're not going to get hung up on something underneath the vehicle. Under the hood, we get 215 horsepower, and surprisingly, we actually have a battery engine under the hood that in a lot of ways mimics a gasoline engine. This is something that is a little bit different from your typical electric vehicle, considering a lot of electric vehicles use this area as a cargo area, and they call it a frunk or a front trunk. So this does not have a frunk. I'll show you the cargo area here in just a moment, but this is what your engine looks like on your 
Subaru Solterra. Before we hop inside, look at the cargo area and the cabin area, I wanted to show you guys something on the Solterra. You have these front cutouts on the side of the vehicle for airflow and they actually do go all the way through. This is something I wasn't sure was going to be on the Solterra because if we look at the new 2023 Outback on, for example, my Outback, we have these cutouts, but they do not go all the way through on the 2023 Outback like the Solterra. I'm guessing Subaru did this on the Solterra because the Solterra being an electric vehicle actually does need to have as minimal resistance as possible, the best airflow possible, and so you need that where you can get it. The Subaru Solterra also has these minimalistic roof rails that allow you to attach crossbars on these little inserts right here. You see the little square cutouts. So you can still put kayaks, bikes, or cargo boxes on top of the Solterra. Of course, that is going to reduce your range because there's gonna be something on top with resistance, but they do at least give you this low profile look and minimalistic design that helps with aerodynamics. We'll go ahead and hop inside and start this up and I'll show you guys around the car. So it's push button start. It's very quiet. I really love the Solterra screen that pops up on initial startup. This car is so quiet. Whenever you're driving at low speeds, I think of like 12 miles an hour or less, you'll hear a slight humming noise on the outside of the car. And that is so that other people will hear you approaching. And that way they can still hear you when you're going through a parking lot at the grocery store or wherever it may be. If you go with a limited or touring, you're gonna have this standard power lift gate. On the premium trim level, you do not have a power lift gate. Subaru gives you an excellent amount of cargo space for your Solterra. You can drop these seats down. They don't have like what we see in the Outback and some of the Foresters where you have a lever to drop the seat, but we do have these levers that are easy to reach and drop that second row down to give you plenty of cargo space. Down below the floor, you do have storage for your charger or whatever else you may want to keep down here. And this false floor does actually slide down. So you just pull it down like that, slide it down, and you get a few more inches of cargo space that you otherwise wouldn't have. Another feature worth mentioning on the Solterra is that if you go with the Limited or the Touring, you get the Harman Kardon upgraded audio. If you go with the Premium, you do not get that same audio system. The steering wheel is telescopic. There's a little lever down there to release. You can move it up and down, forward and back. This is a little bit different from the gasoline Subarus in that I actually prefer to position the steering wheel down so I can see the gauge above the steering wheel, but on my Outback and even the other Subaru models that I've driven, usually I position the steering wheel up a little bit so I can see through the center of the steering wheel. But because of the way this is positioned, how the gauge is, is further out and up on top of the dash, this seems to be the most comfortable position for that. We have a lot of similar controls that we see in our other modern Subarus with our hands-free phone call controls, this right here allows you to toggle through the, the settings and adjust a multitude of different things, including your safety settings. Over on the right, we have our adaptive cruise control and lane keep assist. I will be covering this in a lot more detail in a future video whenever I do a ride along on the car. Mode allows you to change between AM, FM, Apple Music, Amazon Music. Again, a multitude of different things. And then I'm not gonna dive into this touchscreen display today because we still have to set it up, but we will look at some of these controls down here. This is really pulling from Toyota's designs and we have these one touch keys for the heated seats, the heated steering wheel, which is really nice on days like today when it's pretty cold out. You have your eco mode for your, your ventilation, for your climate control. Um, so you can turn that on and off. You can adjust your temperatures just like this. This changes the fan speed level. This changes the mode at which location the vents are blowing, whether it's on face or feed or defrost. You have your recirculation, AC. I'm not sure what this one does yet. Find that out. 
and you've got your heated seat controls over here on the passenger side. So a little bit of a, uh, a combination between touchscreen and tactical controls in our center control area here. This is something that is very new. We have our S drive or one pedal drive. This works with regenerative braking. I'll talk more on that in the future because this is unique to electric cars only. We have our electronic parking brake that engages much like our regular gasoline cars whenever you pull it up and then you put your foot on the brake and press down to disengage. This is auto vehicle hold. This is again something that we have seen in all of our, or not all of our, but a lot of our modern gas vehicles for Subaru. This allows you to hold the vehicle in place or holds the electronic brake for you without having to put it in park when you're at a long red light or waiting in traffic somewhere. Over on the right, you can toggle through different drive modes. So eco, regular, or power, which I guess is equivalent to sport. This view button is for the limited and touring. You have these additional cameras on the outside that allows you to see a panoramic view of the outside of the vehicle whenever you're trying to get into a parking space. Again, I can't show you that right now because we still have to finish the initial setup on this. This is advanced park assist. That is something that allows you to automatically park the vehicle for you and if whether you're pulling forward or in reverse into a parking space or even parallel park. So I'll be showing that in depth in a future video. Your gear select, instead of having a, a traditional gear select, this is much different. This little ring right here allows you to unlock and switch into gear. So clockwise goes to drive counterclockwise goes in reverse and then if you push down that puts it in neutral and then you click the P button and it puts it back in park. Right here we have a wireless charging pad as well as a USB input to charge devices. Cup holders are a nice size. This armrest slides back and forth and you do have storage down below here. There also isn't a glove box on the Solterra. Instead, they have storage down below here. So you can put a phone here. There's two charge ports on each side and your 12 volt power outlet. The access point for the charge is up front on the driver's side. You pop this open and you can charge right here. Now there are three different charge levels for the Subaru Solterra. There is a level one charger, which actually comes with the vehicle. It plugs directly into an AC outlet and it can take approximately 50 hours to charge. Level two is gonna be the one that most people wanna go with. This is gonna be something that you would install at your house and charge overnight. It takes up to 10 hours to get charged. And then the level three charger, that is the DC fast charge that most people probably hear about. You can do that in about an hour. So if you're going to own an EV, the best thing or best practice to do is really get a charger, a level two charger installed at home. Plan to charge this at home overnight, much like you would your cell phone. You can set your car up on a charge schedule so you can plug it up, forget about it. It will charge only during the times that you set. The other benefit to charging overnight is that typically your local utilities are gonna incentivize people to charge overnight, giving you better kilowatt charging hours and therefore achieving a lower cost to charge your new Subaru Solterra. Let me know down in the comment section below if you guys have any questions on the new 2023 Subaru Solterra. I'm gonna be making more videos on this car in the future, so subscribe if you like videos like that. And if you guys haven't done so already and you found value in this video, please remember to click the like button. That really helps me out and I would greatly appreciate it. Hope you guys have a great day and I will see you in the next one.